All right, is this thing on? Nice, let's go. Hey everyone, Pastor Jim here. Listen, I just, uh, I know I'm in a different setting here, but I had to get outside. Y'all, the, the, it's cold outside now. It's, it's getting chilly out here. It feels absolutely amazing. Have y'all been outside recently? If not, you need to go. This is, this is, this is awesome out here. But I wanted to share something I, we've been talking about on Sundays. We've been talking about love. And uh, one of the things we've been breaking down is, is the scripture that was in 1 Corinthians. I was talking about love and it was giving all of the things that love is and love is not. And one of them we spent an entire message on and that was anger. And I, and I kind of want to give just a little bit of some of that message. I do, I do plan to uh, share a link so you can go back and see the message in its entirety. But I want to share a couple of things that we talked about from that Sunday. And I just want to tell you about anger here, uh, and I'm reading from these notes here. It said that uh, anger defined is a strong feeling of displeasure and usually of antagonism. And I just want to ask the question, and many people may not even have thought about this recently, but when was the last time you were angry? When was the last time you were angry? Was it earlier today? Was it yesterday? Was it this week? Was it last week? When was the last time you were angry? And why were you angry? Were you angry because of a circumstance? Were, were you angry because of, of, of a person, something that they said, something that they did? Were you angry because of something that, that you did? Was it something that you said to somebody or something that you did and made you angry with yourself? Or were you angry with God? And, you know, the Bible says a lot of things about anger. But one of the things I just want to talk about just for just for a little bit here is about Saul and David. All right. So there's a scripture here in first Samuel, chapter 18, verses five and seven verses five through seven. I want to read that real quick. And it says, whatever Saul sent him to do, David did it successfully. And Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all of the people and Saul's officers as well. Now, just a second here, just for a little bit of context, if you remember, David was the one who was anointed when he was a kid that he was going to be the next king. When he was anointed to be the next king, there was already a king at the time, and that was Saul. Saul had done some things that God did not like, and God had rejected Saul as king. And when he rejected Saul as king, he told Samuel to go find a replacement. Samuel goes and finds a replacement. It's the one that God chose. It was the one that God anointed, and that was the one that was David. So anyway, word got out that there was a new king on the way. Word got out that there was a new king coming, and this was going to be David. But like I said, Saul is still king at this time. Some of you all might see where this is going. All right, so let's go back to reading here. All right, so let's go to verse 6. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 6. It says, When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns to, of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. They came out to meet King Saul with singing and dancing. King Saul was the one that gave the order. David did it. Everybody came to uh, to meet King Saul. They were going to have a party for King Saul. King Saul, you're the bomb. You're the man. You're doing everything. You're doing everything so great. He said they came out of from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with tambourines and lutes. Verse 7 says that as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. They came out to have a party for Saul, but in that party, they are comparing the new guy to the person that's going to get replaced. Now, again, we as people compare many different things. I saw a video just earlier that was talking about from a basketball perspective. Uh, who is the greatest of all time? Is it Jordan? Is it Kobe? Is it LeBron? Um, it, who, who is it? We're comparing those things. We're comparing cars versus trucks. We're, we're comparing uh, Alexa and we're comparing Google and we're comparing waffles and pancakes and Xbox and PlayStation. We're comparing all of these different things. It's, it's something in us that makes us want to compare things. And in these partic this particular group of people, they were comparing David and Saul. But they weren't just comparing David and Saul. They were doing it at a party that Saul was at. So they were comparing the current person to their replacement. And they were saying that the replacement was much better. Here's a question. Can you, can you imagine how Saul would have felt? What if it was somebody that was comparing you? You know, imagine being on your job and you do your job well. And everybody comes and they have a part a party for you, maybe a retirement party or maybe a year party because you did so well at this particular thing. 
And all throughout that party, all they kept doing was talking about how the person that's coming in to take your place is so much better than you. Sooner or later, you're not going to like that. Sooner or later, you're not going to like that. So let's go back and read and we'll see what happens here. So 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 8 and 9 says, Saul was very angry and his refrain, refrain galled him. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. They're comparing. Now it's making him compare. It, it, it's, it's more than just him being rejected. The other people are comparing him. You're not good enough. Bible says here, what more can he get but the kingdom? Verse 9, and from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Why did he keep a jealous eye on David? David was only doing what he was supposed to do. If Saul sent him out to do it, David would go and do it. But because David was good at doing what Saul sent him to do, Saul is now jealous of David, all based on people. So verse 10 and 11 says this, the next day an evil spirit from God came forcefully upon Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the harp as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul lost control and tried to murder David. David was there playing the harp to keep him to, to keep the king calm and and uh, keep him cool tempered. You know, when the king would be upset, David would play and it would calm the king. Well, this particular time. He decided he was going to murder David because he was jealous of him. This is the replacement. If I kill him, there's not going to be a replacement. But we see the Saul lost control. Bible says this right here in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17. It says, a quick tempered man does foolish things and a crafty man is hated. A quick tempered man does foolish things. You know, you do foolish things. Saul attempted to kill God's chosen one. Does foolish things. So I do have a point that I want to share here. And it's that we're more likely to do damage to something or somebody when we're angry. It's so another scripture here I want to I want to share from James chapter one, verses 19 and 20. It says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everybody should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Everybody should be quick to listen. Slow to speak and slow to become angry for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Now, like I said, I will make a link to the message for everybody to be able to see it. But I gave some points in terms of how we control our anger. We talked about this much more in detail here. I'm just giving you the short version. I'm going to give you one of those points. Like I said, there are more in the message. You have to go see the message to get the rest of them. But the first one was this, is that how do we control our anger? Based off of what we read so far, we realize that our anger will control us. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4 in the New Living Translation says this, Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Anger is an emotion. It's something that we all deal with every now and again. But God gives us the ability to control it. He shows us how we can do it. He shows us that it affects everybody. But there is something that we can do. And this first list that I have right here or this first point that I have right here is to realize that anger will control you. The rest of them are in the, the message that I will link here. But other than that, let's just think about that for a little bit. Anyway, I'm Pastor Jim. Y'all have a great day. God bless and get outside in this cold weather. Talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Thank you so much and God bless.